Memories. Counter-Strike is full of them. Oh my goodness, where do we start? From the winds. And of course, oh. that, this is an insane life, you know. Yeah, can I have the gold bar too? Damn, son. Hell yeah. The losses. To this day, I still haven't looked at that game. I haven't looked at that VOD. And the goodbyes. This moment. This moment, yeah. The past 10 years of CS have taken us from bedrooms to sold out arenas. But how did this come about? Oh, YOLO boost. Who drove things forward? And where did this all start? For over a decade, I've had the pleasure of commentating on some of Counter-Strike's most historical moments. In this film, I'll be looking back at the early years, a journey that began in 2012 when Valve released Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This kick-started a race to the top, a push to be declared the best. But who was leading the charge? Oi, oi, oi. What I see here, very good memories and a lot of bad memories. CSGO. Picture says it all, or now it does at least. CSGO got released in, what was it, 2012, I believe? <laughs> what a shit game it was, <laughs> let me tell you. I think when you look back, 1.6 final year, you saw a lot of tournaments pulling out. Um, you saw the salaries of teams getting less and less. We don't have sponsors, we don't have you know, money for living. Uh, some very important guy told us there is a no chance the global offensive will be big as uh, 1.6. So you need to guys like find a way to, to join like a normal, normal life. It was getting to a point where it got really bad. I actually started working. Uh, towards the end of uh, 1.6, like a part-time job. It was definitely on its way out. Um, and CSGO became like the savior of, of the construct genre, for sure. Uh, CSGO in the beginning, though, was not very beautiful. It lacked a lot of things that people did like about Counter-Strike. Uh, kind of how the movement felt, how responsive it was, how the gunplay worked. But as the years went on and on, it became one of the, I, no, but not one of the, the best first-person shooter ever made, hands down. And with a new game came the formation of new teams. So, how our team NIP got together? How we formed? How we got paired with each other? Where did it all begin? Our whole squad here. Freiburg exists, me. Fifler and Get Right, we're all looking very young. Uh, how did we start? How did we start? Get Right actually approached me. He said like, hey, they want to start up NIP again. Uh, and I was like, cool, 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 cool. Well, I'm down. <laughs> Don't have to ask me twice to play. And then he approached Exist. And then initially we wanted to incorporate like Source players. Since the engine in a sense was the same engine as Source, we kind of wanted to get them in and get some more knowledge and just like see how it would fit and it turned out that Fifaren was absolutely perfect he had good in-game leading capabilities he was very good at like understanding the game and for the fifth player which ended up being Freiburg was not my go-to pick initially but yeah I got outvoted on that one which I'm happy about sometimes hey 
hey, you mess up, okay? I, I, I can admit that. Adam turned out to be the perfect fit. When a CSGO uh, came up, uh, I don't know uh, uh, I will continue my esports career. There is a fun, funny story because uh, I invite like a Taz and Neo to my wedding, and there already was like uh, my future boss because I changed changed the work. I, I left the esport, and then Neo and Taz asked my wife, "Please let him play CS:GO. There is a there is a future because player and IP playing still playing. There is something something wrong. Why are they playing? For what?" Once Friber was decided, uh, Get Right uh, invited us all over to like a pool party, and it turned out that we like we all felt like we all became best friends that night. Uh, and uh, after a few hours of my wedding, I came to my boss, my future boss, and say to him, "Boss, I came back to eSport." With new teams forming, and two scenes merging into one, it was only a matter of time until fresh rivalries were born. Oh, when CSGO was released, it was really a big excitement because in CSS we were owning everyone in very games. Even myself, I remember in 2010, I moved to one point six for several months because I was like, there is no challenge on CSS, like it's just too easy and stuff. And when CSGO is coming out, this is the real test, you know, this is really like the real thing. We're gonna face the 1.6 monsters, the 1.6 legends. They came in with a style that I was not used to play against. Very structured, very tactical. They used a lot of strategies where they do this big ass, <laughs> Big ass hits on a site where everything was timed perfectly with Nate's timing and everything, and I was a little bit blown away. We had the, a lot of set things with smokes, flashes, just running in bomb site, looking at the floor and stuff like that, you know. So that was that kind of stuff. This is existence. Many people say this like a, the biggest brain in uh, in CS. I can agree with this guy, the the mastermind. Everyone which uh, like a play versus them lost. Everyone. Fifthlearn and Freiburg coming from Counter Strike Source, they were hyping these guys up like they were beasts. Beasts that could not be tamed, beasts that would eat us up alive. We had no idea what was coming for us. Of course, I knew about Forest, Get Right, and stuff like that. And when I knew, like, I'm gonna face them, I was really excited because I wanted to show them that I can be better than them. So we are like the little brother on CSS and 1.6 was like the big brother and we are looking at them and probably waiting for one day uh, where we can face them and CSGO was actually like the perfect time. Bon appétit! They were supposed to be what we became in CSGO. They were supposed to be the ones dominating and having this sick win streak, obliterating um, the scene from the get-go. That was not the case, however, uh, we play them. I can't even count how many times we played the guys. I can't count how many times we beat them. I can't count how many times we stole final from them. But they were actually an amazing team. Especially this guy. Everyone is scared of this guy. Like uh, the fastest, the quickest sniper in the in the in the world. The best. Very quick. No one will quicker. Really. Kenny S is stuck in the site finding more. That's brilliant to Kenny S again. Up close. Oh my goodness, Kenny S. Uh, eventually they beat us, and again, and again. Uh, <laughs> so eventually they did catch up to us. Uh, absolutely lovely rivalry though. Um, but at the same time, uh, it was very interesting and just like a way for me to learn and adapt even more, like to level up myself in a bit. Like, okay, they can do this, I can do that better. Nice out to Freiburg, it's a one versus two, but oh, no! Wow. Forest, the dream ender. We were playing so many times each other that it went to a point where after the finals, we were drinking a beer all together. And now I can say, for example, get right, he's a close friend to me, you know? And it's actually crazy to think that more than 10 years ago, even 15 years ago, I was fan of someone who became my friend. It was definitely fun, but Freiburg and Fifth Learn definitely set the bar a little bit too high <laughs> in the beginning. 
dream ender. And with those rivalries born, and the storyline set, all that was needed was a tournament to crown who was king. So with Counter-Strike Global Offensive came also something uh, that hasn't been done in, in 1.6 actually. We didn't have in 1.6 and what didn't exist in Counter-Strike before was like support from the developer. Uh, and in this case, Valve actually like, okay, hey, we want to make a tournament. Like the CS, like CSGO Major. First Major always is the most important like event. We preparing for this a lot. We, we, we have a new players. We, we would like to show up for, for our fans, for, for war. Today, as people know, like the Major has been, become such a big part of the hype surrounding Counter-Strike. Uh, like weeks before, months before, who's going to perform? Who's going to underperform? Like which team is going to win? And this specific first one, I remember, was such a big thing for us uh, in NFP. This was actually, okay, hey, we're doing it big now. We, we, we need to win, we need to win. Let's focus. We finish like a CS 1.6 with some wins, and we, we hope we do it the same with CS GO. It was $100,000 for the winner, which was a lot of money. A lot of money. That's, like, I think the first tournament we won was sitting at, like, $2,500. So this was, like, a big step up to, like, holy smokes. We were the favorites to win, and we showed it as well during that major that we are the favorites. Yeah, this is yours, right? This is yours. You go up, grab it. Grab the trophy. Walk home. Job is done. <sighs> we reached the final. <laughs> And then uh, in the final, like this team, if we would play that match over a series of 50 games, I, I think we would probably beat them 45 out of 50. I'm pretty sure. They had some faces that were well known from... Uh, Hello. From Looking at some old memories. Looking at some old memories. My friend was just actually speaking <laughs> about your about your win against us. I even, I even brought some some memories here. Mm -hmm. uh, one little bit more good for me and one good for you. <laughs> makes, so I went for a di dipl diplomatic approach there. <laughs> Make things a little bit better yeah. <laughs> when you arrive, <laughs> actually. But yeah. I, I was speaking about because you're... You guys were not that well known, right? You would... Hey, I'm going to ask you the question. Yeah? Did you expect to win this final? Like, honestly. Because I, 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 was, I was sitting here saying that like we were probably heavy favorites. I mean, you were enormous fa favorites. Right? Yeah, because you guys haven't done really like anything before this no, no, tournament, no, no. right? We, no, we weren't. No, no we didn't. guys. I mean, we were such a random gang of players, really. Go on, healthy. Forget I could find him. He goes for the fake. He looks all around. He can't find Schneider. Schneider's walking up here. Is he going to be able to do it? There's not much time. Geraint has to find this kill. He's not looking behind the barrel. He misses him. How did it happen? And now Schneider gets the kill. There's no doubt. 14 to 2, and that's the run. Look at him high fiving. Look and at the complete happiness on Fnatic right there. You did not expect this, did you, Anders? And then, you know, we just felt good. I don't know. There was this harmony, you know, you get yeah. sometimes when you go to a tournament where everything just feels right. It kind we of stinks a... a little bit. Yeah. Hearing. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I understand. And there it is. Complete celebration, DreamHack Winter 2013 champions. You've got them right here on your screen. And then came this legendary picture of you uh, putting down your pants. But you have to tell me the story of that one. Basically, this Norwegian guy won a tournament and he took his shirt off. Mm. And then I, <laughs> I, I basically one up it, one up it, and said I'll take my pants off instead. Uh, and then when I won, I just had to do it, you know. Uh, and then it's, uh, it's so funny when you see Get right here. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, actually. And he points his fingers. <laughs> yeah, imagine losing, yeah, losing I mean, major <laughs> final. And then you see a guy pulling down his pants. Unbelievable. Obviously, you guys were, were idols and, um, you know, people we, we all in our team looked up to. With that, Fnatic shocked the world to claim the first major title. But majors weren't the only thing that was new to CSGO.
I'm about to redo my garage, don't judge me here. But we do have some pins here, this will be neat to look at. We got some of those, and I have something I don't think I told you guys about, this will be funny. Put this out here. Player card. <laughs> I actually don't even remember the company who made these, but so far my, my stats are Iceman, 97, Freestyling, 99, Spray, 95, Entertainment, 96, Flashdance, 99. I think we could have bumped a couple of numbers there, but whatever. And we got all the lanyards, some of the CS knives. Look at these. Crambit. Honestly, not my favorite skin, though. I, I would have liked an M9 Bayo. I think I might have one. Shoutouts to these guys. Oh, my goodness. Where do we start? One thing that, um, that came with the majors itself, like eventually what they did was um, they added stickers. They added not only team stickers, but they also added like individual autographs. Your name, Forrest, could be actually be in Counter-Strike. Or an IP logo on a gun? No way. To get my name like immortalized, so to speak, in the game was epic. I mean, now I have a couple of different types of stickers, a song in the game. All this stuff is just, is just super cool to me and it's something that I could just show off literally if I'm just running around a public server and stuff. It's so funny when people could recognize like a, something on my profile, a little icon from a trophy or anything like that. It's, it's super cool. I think they even announced like some, some of the sales were gonna go to the players, which was also like, oh, what would this, hey, hey, <laughs> what are we talking about here, huh? <laughs> what we also saw was an opportunity for fans to now support us directly in the game and for us to give them something cool that wasn't even, you know, even if we were selling them for 10 cents or giving them away for free, it was just like, you love the feeling when someone's wearing your jersey, it's the same as when someone's got your skin on their gun. I think I've been to a couple events, huh? See here. Oh man, I'm glad we found these. Look at this. You can almost consider it the most important thing in this box because Half-Life Counter-Strike with the CD key on it was, this is the origins here. Um, and a lot of you these days don't even know what this is. You guys can copy it even at this point. I don't know what it'll get you. <laughs> I see Steel <laughs> smiling at me right away. Man, we got all the emotions, the liege crying. Wow, there's a lot here. So my first actual team that was basically a pro team was Complexity here. Um, we kind of put together what we thought was the super team that we could at the time. Myself, Hiko, and Swag were considered three of the best like 1.6 players at the time. The scene started growing and that's when, you know, the source players and the other team, Steel Days, and those guys, uh, Nance Skadoodle was a new name here, started coming up adjacent kind of to our complexity team. And then that's kind of when we switched to Cloud9 in 2014. And Hiko was a big name there. Shroud kind of came out of the shadows and now starts to kind of become the C9 legacy uh, began right there. So Hiko, what was solid about him as a player, not only was his clutch ability and skill, but what was also really helpful with him early on was his role was kind of defined. He was like a lurker, he was, you know, edge of the maps, you know he's gonna kind of be alive last, and so you had something you could rely on. Creeping around the site now, there's still time. To oh my goodness, how does he do this? How does he go do it again? Yeah, he goes started solidifying his clutch ability early on. I mean, obviously, um, what was it, against Device in the team, uh, a Mirage. So Hiko and Sean, that's a good kill from Hiko, but they realize Dupree's still in there somewhere. They're gonna try and go for it here. They wanna go all in. Hiko comes in with another kill, and back to a two on two. That bomb so far ticked, they gotta move quick right now. They're going for it. The defuse is already happening. Hiko, are you kidding me? He's gonna go for it, they win the round, Hiko! Hiko, are you kidding me? You know, I can't copy Enders, I won't try, but uh, obviously that same tournament, I think he hit that flick shot uh, on Dust 2. It is too late. Garite is going to be waiting. Hiko charges in, doesn't check. Oh, what? Whoa! Oh my god! Inhuman reactions! Shroud sitting at the end. We were next to each other at a lot of events. The first tournament with Shroud was Cologne, and we just was like, boom, he's on the team. We played online, boom, straight to Germany, boot camp. They're like, you're going to room with Jordan. He's like the veteran. 
So I, it was funny. I, I showed him how to get a free breakfast because the hotel, I was like, listen, we just lie about what room we're in. These rooms get free breakfast. And he was just laughing and kind of like, he actually told me how much he looked up to me in the hotel room. Well, I told him, I was like, listen, Mike, you look up to me, but I guarantee you, if you keep doing what you're doing, the roles are going to be reversed. And sure enough, man. Wait until they get close to the site here and shroud. I mean, probably one of the first guys that I saw that laser aim. It's now down to Oliver. Oh, 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 oh my God, he takes him down, and that's going to be close out nine, winning it back. It was a chance for a fresh start at uh, North American because we weren't necessarily the most respected region. And so the scene began to grow. Whilst legends sat waiting for their chance at major glory. This is my famous wall. This is my team. I spent with them like more time than my family. This is like a test IGL. This is like a Neo also IGL. This is like a snacks sometimes IGL. Our coach Kuban, Biali, and the Papito. Maybe not IGL, but they have like an eagle, eagle nose like here, and I, of course, in my team, I was the sniper with the best skin in the game, Dragon Lore, Papito. Losing the first major, heading into the second major, which, once again, it's not us lifting a trophy. <laughs> um, Virtus Pro, this major, um, Katowice. Katowice major. And we say, we're gonna play in the big stage. This is our goal. We, are, we will prepare for this. I always say like a Polish crowd, show the world how you can help, how you can cheer from the crowd to the esports players. We believed in ourselves so much and we were such a dominant team at that point uh, that heading into the second major felt still like, okay, okay, we didn't win the first one, but we're definitely winning the second one. And as well, during this tournament run, we did um, what we always done, right? Winning. <laughs> I want to see a grand final versus uh, Virtus Pro. I think it's going to be the most amazing game ever. Uh, our team has prepared very well for this tournament and we're happy to be in the final. We get up to the final and it, it, it's against Virtus Pro at their home soil. Katowice, packed out. The matchup uh, versus NIP always was uh, hard. We know that wasn't be easy. No way. Neo and uh, Forest. There is like a always special atmosphere uh, in our team. Neo always play the best Counter Strike, and Forest the same. But uh, we have advantage. Uh, NIP know we playing in front of our crowd. Very very good start and a very nice kiss around by Virus Pro, and everyone is cheering for them. It is just crazy. And I think in this day they playing the top level. I feel I feel it because I think they a bit scared. But this is my opinion. I don't know them opinion. Virtus Pro as a squad was was scary. They like when people talk about scary. I, I know very games, right? People were talking about very ah scary. No, no, no. You don't know scary. These guys, Virtus Pro, they were scary. These are the type of guys you play against, and it doesn't matter if you're up like 14, one and a half. These guys would never, and I mean never, just give the game to you. Playing in Poland, did you believe that you'd make it here? It was our goal. It was our dream, but it's not finished. The job is not done yet. Our aims are ready to change the champion, to change the number one in the world. Taking information, just going onto the A bomb side, and there's no one. Pasha gets the first kill. Pasha picks up the first kill. It's a headshot onto Get Right, and he'll put it down. I remember this was like a special final because after this match is starting, one by round, people cheering. No, even not round by round, but by kill by kill. On that A site, they've got four players in there, and Stacks coming in, gets himself a headshot onto Forrest, and every frag is being cheered on by the crowd. People went crazy, and this is what I remember. Every kill, single kill. So they were at one point, I guess, called the plow. Versus plow is the, if, if the, if the team give us, you know, chance, win, round by round, there is no stop of us. There is no button to stop us. Just machines, right? They could absolutely stomp opponents. You think you're winning, 
but then uh, suddenly the ignition turns on vroom, and then they just start plowing it. He will eventually go down at the hands of Pasha. They're three francs away now, Virgil's pro. The last round, that was Inferno. That was like a four versus two. The, the bomb has been planted, and uh, there was a four versus one. It's all on Forrest. He gets the first. In this time, I already like a, like a vulcan. Like a pumping, 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 pumping myself. Even, even I am, even Forrest, I think, was alive. I am already, like, I think, jumping. He doesn't get the second Taz has delivered in front of the whole crowd. Already jumping and uh, be happy, pump my biceps. I go to the snacks already to hug him, to feel my team. And we say, we did it. We did what we said like uh, one year ago, we're gonna play in the big stage and we won. We realized the plan. Maxim, nothing more. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for your EMS World Kadavita champion, Virtus Pro! Yeah, we did get plowed that final, actually. We did get plowed when I think about it. This is the first CSGO major final I played, I think I've been in five, where we lost 2-0. And it was not even close. So maybe the plow started from here. Who knows? Everyone was proud. Everyone was proud when we won Katowice, when especially I back home, like a people you know on the street. I don't even know the the esports, they congratulation me because the, everything you know was in television. Media media interesting. Even I go to my to my city when I'm born. Like uh, the government of the city, like uh, invite me the, to the to the building, give me some, you know, like a medal, some uh, papers, like uh, flowers. So I feel like a god. I feel like a god. First time in my in my esports career, and from this from this moment, uh, I told many times, it's my my esports career, my personality, Pasha biceps, growing up uh, till days after this event. So I would like to say thank you, thank you for 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 Yasser Katowice make this uh, make this event. And that's, that's how I will remember my biggest, my biggest match, my biggest tournament, how we love our, my team, how we you know, stick together after many losses before we can always stand up and fight for the biggest achievements in the world. The camaraderie they had and the trust they had in each other uh, was a very beautiful thing to see even in a rivalry team. It was so nice to see a squad being so like tight. They went on to be, uh, for sure, one of the best teams in, in Counter-Strike. Absolute, absolute beasts. Right now, I show you my the best achievement in my eSport career, two in one. One, because I won the Katowice, and second one, I was the MVP of this event. So I wish every player that kind of moment, won the best, most important event of the year, and in the same time, MVP of this event. This is me, Papito. Biceps always with you. If ever there was one thing that was for certain in CSGO, you eventually got what you deserved. I remember this one. This is uh, quite memorable for all of us. Uh, it's when we won our first uh, major uh, with NIP uh, after like struggling for <laughs> how many times was it? I think it was like, three major finals we lost. Yeah, the relief winning this finally <laughs> after two attempts earlier to actually be able to win the major the third time uh, against Fnatic. Um, it was a lot of doubt and pressure. And I think Getright's emotion uh, in this picture definitely uh, <laughs> speaks volumes uh, of how important that win was. I remember, well, was it was it Freiburg? Yeah. The, the 1v3 yeah. or 4? A 1v5, I think. Was it 1v5? Not 1v5, 2v5. Uh, Existius runs away and hides. Ah, okay, he kills, okay, he kills yeah. the plant oh. when it's hidden. It's Seal this round, it looked so good. Just a few seconds left here, seven, six left. Freiburg goes for the kill, he's gonna pick it up. If just Existius survives, he's gonna win the round, there's no time! Oh my god, Freiburg, are you kidding me? 
Freiburg till this day, when I play with him, still does that call out. Like when he does something amazing when we're playing, he would himself scream like, Freiburg! So yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's absolutely going insane, but he deserves it. He deserves it. it like that tournament, to be fair. Pe yeah, peak, peak tournament for Adam. He always had that potential and I think we were so hungry for him. After losing two major finals, I think everybody has needed that win so hard. Everybody has played out of their minds, Adam especially, but the whole team just stepped up big time. It's a good moment though, even as a competitor, I could still kind of feel like, yeah, you, you guys deserve it. This was definitely the last chance for that lineup to win a major. Yeah. It's hard to put emotions on a big uh, victory like this, but I think yeah. everybody has exploded. Get right drop into the floor crying. So I think it speaks like for everybody in the NIP yeah. team that, uh, that we did it. Fifth round wasn't around long after this win, I believe. So cementing the 87 and 0 squad with a major victory out of like one of the greatest highlights of my entire career, and I think uh, I think for many of us in that squad, uh, always going to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, win ever. But the scene was not without controversy. With bigger tournaments and more money, came allegations of foul play and even cheating. So cheating, allegations, and I guess the man, <laughs> man of the hour is, is, is Flusha here. You know what? This guy, because of this guy, the Flusha, our IGL Neo can't sleep. Neo can't sleep because of this guy. Neo always think, he, he has something, always. Neo always analyzed these matches versus this guy, always. Especially when we lost, Neo went crazy. I think at some point you, I was probably dragged into like the whole, like, okay, yeah, he's cheating, or like, and at some point, no, he's not cheating. He has wall high, I'm high, everything. And uh, poor I, and I always say, poor Neo, that's gonna be like a very bad night for my friend Neo, for I feel it. Flush up. Oh, finds the angle onto Olaf and the info on the other one. Surely not a 1v3 from Flusher. Ray. Oh! <laughs> See you later, man. He always have an obsession about cheaters. Obsession about everyone. But at the same time, you like don't think anybody can cheat when you know like what Dreamhack did and everything they tried to do to like secure everybody that. Okay. I think we had the highest security out of yeah, uh, probably. anyone. Yeah, probably. There was at one of, point like, the tournament. Of course, Fusa. Some things aren't that easily explainable in Counter Strike. No. How you make reads. There's a lot of gut or... feeling yeah, in, and in Counter Strike. Sometimes you don't know you're gonna you're gonna just move your mouse, you're gonna move your keyboard, whatever. And because on the game your cursor is gonna do like that, and maybe there is a skin behind the wall, but you don't know that you're gonna be a cheater. It's starting when the cockling, when the cockley is uh, killing me through the jump on the ESL Cologne, especially on the land in front of no, many thousands of people. That was like a quarter final. It was a very important round. I can't believe what I'm going to see right here. Oh, wow. Get out of here. Get out of here. And that was the moment uh, everyone starting, something is, something is wrong. A few weeks later, there is like a information on the internet. Quickly get banned. I still think about this. I write to Quickly a lot of times, Quickly. You have something or no? Please tell me. You have something or no? And quickly, I swear, Pasha, I, I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. To be honest, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. From there, from that period, people can actually start thinking what? People can cheat on a professional level, on a competitive level, in land. It impacted us, but we tried to kind of switch it into this us against them mentality where, you know, let's shut. The crowd down, yeah. like so we, you, we, we will take the you were silence feed, you were as feeding. cheers. Yeah, you were feeding you know. on the. Yeah. So the I buy power ban, man, we had heard you know 
the CSGO lounge betting was happening and people were realizing their matches were on it and they're like, dude, this match doesn't mean anything. We go into this, some, some other North American teams say something's happening, some match fix or someone got caught and we kind of heard someone without knowing the name. And then they said, I think it's Brax and all them. I think, I think they literally threw a match. Wait a sec, they threw? Like, we're like, dude, I think they throw. Look at these clips. He's gonna have two right there. Can they line up for him? What is he doing? Why did he hesitate so much? Oh, he says he wanted to knife. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, the entries are looking a little weak for my right power along with the strats. I mean, they're just doing very basic things. I think they actually threw, like, is this for real? Like, why would they, like, how much money could they have made? Like, you're like wondering, is it, is, was this really worth? Like, they're for sure, because something bad is gonna happen. And then, of course, the news comes out and boom, Valve bans them. Like, we were still figuring out our scene. Like, these are players that we for sure thought maybe we'd even play with again. And at this time, you're thinking, wait, like, Brax, who I liked as a player, Steel, Dazed, AZK, like, these are all really good players. Are they done? And then I kind of started to go, oh, this is real. Tyler, of course, said, hey, I wasn't part of this. The other guys weren't denying it, and you're like, really? Man, uh, it was a bummer. Honestly, it just felt weird to even ask him about it. I think eventually I talked to Brax, and he's like, I didn't really even know what I was doing, but it, but you did it, so it was, yeah. I think at the time in North America, we were already struggling for practice. So not only did we lose like a really good practice partner, um, but like our rivalry, you know, rivalries push you to the next level. I mean, if I could turn back the clock and talk to the by power guys, it's obvious. Like I, Okay, stay away. This is just this, this is not worth it. So, I mean, what else could I say, really? Right. However, this wasn't the first time the CS:GO boat was rocked by drama. For that, we must look back to the time of the Olaf boost. Oh, the Olaf boost. I'm gonna remember it all my life, you know? Uh, so yeah, uh, the Olaf boost. Yeah, the... Sensitive topic for, for many reasons. Gun shipping, are you ready? It's LDLC versus Fnatic, make some noise. Yeah, packed house here for this match, and this could potentially be a grand final match. So essentially, we, we ended up playing LDLC in the semifinals. Uh, I remember... Uh, we did a really good city uh, side on overpass. It was the third map. LDLC are coming into the second half ultra confident. I mean, they had a near flawless first half here versus Fnatic. They have a great lead, a great head start going in here. I think we lost was Pistol as no. well. Yeah, you did. Uh, Shots come, in with another one here, and it's going to be a one on two. He just has to defend. It's a one headshot. He needs to pick up a second one, and he's going to get it. Double kill. LDLC, they win the round. So we, we were essentially in a really, really deep. Hole. <laughs> oh, the pressure is mounting on the Fnatic side. And then we are up like to 13 4, something like that. And we are like, okay, we knew we, we had the game uh, and we're gonna close it out. And then we had this, you know, boost which we essentially wanted to save even further into the tournament, but this was a do or die moment. Do they have a weird boost going on currently? Yes, look at this boost. Oh, my, oh god. my god, this is beautiful. He can look over oh. to the restrooms as well. But I must ask, like, who, like, who came up with the boost? Like, where did you? So it was JW who came with it, I don't know, one and a half or two months earlier. So we never used it in practice. We never, we had only oh, like yeah. seen how it might play out. So you didn't we like never uh, you, use you never it. used. So that was actually the first time yeah. you actually like. So you didn't actually know how it played out. No. Patience came coming out again. Spot them coming out of squeak door as well. He's here. He sees them down there. Straight headshot. They have no idea. Smith's looking confused and dazed. And there's gonna be a follow-up headshot. Oh, Meister! You gotta be kidding me! It's fanatic. They pick up the round. The boost works. And then we started to get. Chill. We don't really know how. Maybe we are missing some information. Make sure to communicate like wisely for your teammates and stuff like that. So that's fine. They still are not sure. They're just getting fired. At. They're going down. All of my stuff. They have no idea. But after two or three runs, we are like, he's still killing us, and we're trying to do some timeouts and to speak between us. Like 
Where is he? Oh man, what a situation. What an absolutely crazy situation. I mean, did you see him? Did you see him? Did you see him? No, no, no. Like, what is going on? No, I think he's just jumping. There it is. All of my staff is raining down death from above. <laughs> it's 13 to 7. I remember them looking so confused. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can see. I see AK yeah. like looking yeah. up in the... <laughs> Ah, look at this, now Happy getting boosted up, but he gets spotted, All Meister sees it coming. And all the crowd, like next to us, were like starting like just to, to, to jump or whatever, like to look at us, to say, hey, what, what is going on? We don't understand, you know what I mean? Fnatic, they make their way to the semis of another major tournament here. Pronax with a final kill. Then we just like lose the match, and normally when you lose the match, you are frustrated, you are sad, you are angry, whatever. But you got emotions, and it's probably one of the only match of my world career that we didn't have emotions because we didn't understand, we didn't know what's going on. I mean, uh, the map is called Olaf Pass for a reason. Honestly, I, I don't know, I am genuinely speechless. It, it, it's made me so upset, but because it is complete. Do you, do you think it's fair? In the arena, the fans were sharing, right? So we were super excited. I was screaming after every kill, I think. I was super excited and uh, I was like, yeah, then we won, right? I was super happy. And then, <laughs> yeah, I was watching Twitter and that was just a weird vibe, like... After the match, uh, then of course we went to well, the admin because we are like, like he's seeing like 70% of the map. How is it legit? I remember being, you know, obviously sad, uh, watching at the, the reactions. Mm. It was so weird as a spectator as well. I remember actually tweeting, I, I said, I, I wrote like, this isn't Counter-Strike at all. Yeah. But it's, it was all this circumstance because we're recently cheating accused of Flasha. Yeah. Uh, I remember even walking into the hotel someplace would yell at us, scream at us. Uh, so we couldn't really talk to anyone. It was like everyone hated us. We were us. isolated. Yeah, we were isolated from the yeah, competitive scene at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people were not liking us, the community did not like us, all the pro players, everyone. That, that for me was very hard and I was close to stop playing professionally. I, I didn't want to do anything else. This is not worth it, you know. Weird vibe and very like depressing times. I just remember I wanted to leave, I wanted to get out of there. I think a lot of players, myself included, is like a little bit like regretful probably how it all turned out. Even if, in my opinion, it was not legit to do something like that, uh, I can't say that it was also something uh, good uh, with all people going harsh at them or whatever. The bashing on their side like were too heavy, really too heavy, and I think it was really hard for them. Uh, not the best memories after that win, but because uh, uh, at the end of the day we, we decided to, to drop out of the, of the yeah. tournament. Fnatic has forfeit the match between uh, against LDLC. Okay. So this is final, and LDLC is through. They're gonna face off. So we essentially decided there's no there's no point. In, That's actually true. In doing like who it. can handle that? Actually. No, it was like you had to isolate for a while from from social media. <laughs> no. I mean, I don't think that boost was that overpowered, and I've said this many times before. If it happened again, I would do the same. Uh, like now, even more so. And I would fight the decision. <laughs> like, I don't know, I'm, I'm a different person now. But uh, yeah, in the end, it kind of helped because after that, I think I became a better player and we as a team became uh, a better team as well because we were like, okay, fuck it. It's we against everyone else. Let's just do this together. And we, we started winning and we won a lot. For us, and also for Fnatic, in a way, for all kind of this, this bullshit that was going on, like, let's just not put that chance in the trash. If we win against Fnatic, 
like that, we win the event, no matter what. Round of applause for LDLC. Oh, they're even gonna put it up there. That win, like you will remember it for, for a lifetime. And I was also playing with Smith, who is my best friend. Uh, and, uh, you know, when the first matchup came out, we were like, okay, let's do a promise that we're gonna win all first major together. And we did what we were actually like dreaming of when we were younger. And I'm really happy to have been lucky with him and with my former teammates uh, back then. And with the controversy behind us, a new scene began rising. Born out of South America. So many years playing, so many nice moments. Major trophy. A lot of friends, some rivals. Very cool. Uh, when CSGO came out? Uh, personally, I had just joined university. I was studying uh, electrical engineering for two weeks, and then CSGO came out. And for me, it was like, what the hell do I do now? Do I, do I keep studying? Do I finish this university? Or do I really go all in again on gaming? Because I had done that before. It was in 2009 when I got the invitation to play with the best Brazilian players at the time. And I, I really went all in during that time. But it was a tough time for CS overall because I think it was at the very end of PS 1.6 and things were not looking that good anymore. So yeah, uh, I had some thoughts and I decided I had to go all in again. I had to keep going. And then 2014, we decided to go to our first CSGO tournament. Uh, it happened in France. And on that specific month, we decided to use all the gatherings, all the money we received from the students on Games Academy. This is Fallen. I'm here to talk today about CTO Mirage. And we actually told the community, hey, we're going to be using the money to go to that tournament. So the subscriptions doubled. And we went from like 200 students monthly to 400 at that time. And then we played our first tournament there. I think we won a match and lost all of the others, or maybe we lost all the matches. And it was it was quite funny because even Pasha here, I remember in Fur, he was like in the tournament, he, I'm gonna take a photo with this guy. I might not have ever seen him again, you know? And then that's when we went for our first international tournament. We play MLG Aspen. And that's when we really showcased ourselves to the world for the first time, because we beat Cloud9. Jordan and his team was doing super good at the time. And here comes the Brazilians coming from nowhere. Nobody ever heard of them. And then we played an amazing match against Denon Mirage. We were playing uh, with a couple of new strategies that no one had ever seen it. We were literally throwing five smokes at the same time on Wayside. And make sure that they uh, don't take any losses once these grenades come in. And there you go. You see Cloudline moving in a little bit. They know what's going on. We had all planned out where we're going to plant the bomb, which kills are going to come how they would freak out when they see all the smoke. And then people are like, oh my God, like we, we gotta get this game global. Just like that, Cloud9 get obliterated against the Brazilians, Kaboom. I don't think anyone saw that coming. And Cloud9 looks stunned, they look speechless. And watch out world, Brazil's got a contender. Having the Brazilians as a rival were interesting because they moved to USA. So now we had a new practice partner. And these guys were like, whoa, these guys could, these guys could shoot. Yeah, so we, we first went to US and we went together to some stores, buy the first tables, get the first chairs. You know, we were deciding who is going to sleep with who because we didn't have enough uh, rooms for everyone. But, you know, there was just this feeling that what really mattered to us was playing some CS. And that's when we received the first um, invite to play uh, qualification process in Katowice for the major. During that trip, we didn't have enough money to do all the things we wanted. And that's when uh, Flusha had just won, I think, a Pantamera tournament in Sweden. And he, he decided to donate his winnings to our cause. 
Hey Flusha, we're just coming out here in Denver and realized that you made a donation for us of 4K reels and because of you, we are ready to go there. Thank you so much, man. With a lot of help from himself and other players and other orgs like ESA and Brazilian community, we're able to go to Poland and qualify for the first major. And you can imagine the pressure, right? Because not only really wanted to, to go through and do well, but a lot of you have helped us financially and emotionally and everyone supporting us. And when we went to the last match, we we're playing the Danish guys. And I just remember the feeling of finishing that match and recognizing how important that win was. Fallen picks it up and Kaboom advance another step closer to the major. Couple changes here, couple changes there, and we are able to get this guy in the team. Eventually, Ziki K uh, was removed and Kozira was added. And since day one, he already showcased something different. We would go play practice, and he was just a headshot machine. You could see it on the first days. Even the practice we're playing, I remember even Kerrigan saying something like, Where the hell did you find this guy? You know, he's like dropping 30 bombs every single practice. And from day one, he was very different. He had a lot of um, dedication. He was the first one on the server, last one off. Very smart, very open-minded to the ideas the team wanted to play. At a certain point, we felt that something was needed. We decided to pick up Taco, FNX, and Zeus, the coach, and make a big replacement to the team. And that was just the beginning for us. That's where all the magic happened. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise here. Light the building up. Yeah, MLG Columbus. I remember at the time as well, they had just doubled up the price pool. You went from $250,000 to $500,000, which were like, whoa. If it happens for us to win, that's gonna be the biggest ever. There you have it, folks. And again, I don't think you can nod enough to Fallen. Not only what oh. he has done with this team, what he does with any of his players around him, and what he has done for the Brazilian scene. They've already, in, in the space of a few months, elevated themselves. They're already an elite team. They're making finals. They're coming close to winning. The key thing is they've never won a big tournament before. And they've certainly never been this deep in a major before. So the obvious narrative is like, oh, is it their time yet? And we played this tournament super well. Uh, one of the deciding matches happened on Mirage again. And this time we had this guy, 59. Yeah, he has the graffiti in game now on, on Van on B-side Mirage. Here he comes once again. The first base is a trend. He's going to hit the ground there. It's cold. Oh, oh what? And jumping double from cold. What is there going on right now? How does he do this? He made some magic happen and they were like, what the hell? What, what just happened? And he was like, I can't even explain what happened, guys. Let's just win this thing out. From that moment on, we kept going and we came back into this match. There even a, a, a tackle on the second map on Cash. He wrongly, or I think he missed bought uh, the auto sniper, and he was getting so many kills with him. I think he even bought it again afterwards. Big play from Fur, and now Taco's in there with that auto sniper. Two frags. He's going to get the last one as well. Some of those things that decides that you don't really account for, but when it's your time to win, when it's fate, it, it just really happened. And then later on, we played finals against Navi, and we won first map on, on Mirage. Picking it up and moving. And then from that moment, the confidence was over the roof. We just wanted to win this trophy so much that nothing was stopping us. Now it's a one-on-one, -on -one. Guardian versus Taco. It may just be destined to be. It's Luminosity winning their first major championship. So yeah, this team was quite special, quite special. Selfless player, Taco, playing for the team, uh, doing his anchor role. Every team wanted to have a Taco at the time. We had Code Zero, um, best player in the world for two years in a row, insane rifler. We had Fur, the most aggressive player, and I would say a meta change in game style, you know, like he, so many people learned from him. And we had FNX, surviving from the ashes, clutching a lot. And FNX is the kind of player who you just see that he was born for the game. Going through my mind, that was like, oh, everything really was worth it, you know. I have been playing since 2003. I won that in 2016, so 13 years of uh, grinding, you know. A lot of time looking for a moment like that. I 
know that you've sacrificed an awful lot. You've moved home, you've left family at home, you've had no money, you've put money into the scene, you've helped the Brazilian Counter-Strike scene, so much. Can you sum up to me just what this means to the country of Brazil and your teammates? Uh, just to sum it up, this is our dream coming true. And I don't know, just thanks. It's our dream to play Counter-Strike competitively and winning the biggest tournament ever on CSGO means so much to me personally and I'm sure it means a lot to my teammates as well. One by one, the great leaders of Counter-Strike began to get their moments of glory. From Fallen, to the legendary Ukrainian captain, Zeus. I just say, all of Meister, I love you. And second, God help me and I won Major. But despite all of this, the scene still yearned for a major win out of North America. So going into probably my best CSGO roster yet, which was myself, Shroud, Stewie, Automatic, Skadoodle, we hit our stride for sure, but really we hadn't done what we wanted this whole time. We hadn't won a major. You know, I think at that point, something needed to happen to our team, myself and Shroud, out for Tarek and Rush. And honestly, it looked all the same. Everything looked the same until um, E-League Major Boston. We're gonna have FaZe versus Cloud9. So much history, and it's all about this trophy. Yeah, the E-League Major, uh, the final, uh, the choke. Yeah, it's a hard one. I mean, uh, we played uh, super good going into that tournament. We were super confident. And during the tournament, we just became better and better and better. Base Clan, this is meant to be their major. They've been the favorites for like coming in, one of the most expensive rosters, if not the most expensive roster. If they don't win this, this is a missing ring. FaZe, not only was their team top to bottom skilled, Olaf was probably considered the previous couple of years one of the best players in the world, came back as like, not even their star player at that point, and he was still such a beast. Then you got Nico, who's arguably the best rifler of all time in CSGO. Kerrigan, who's arguably one of the best strat callers. Rain, who's one of the most solid land players. Every shot he needs to hit, he's gonna hit. And then Guardian, who was, he was one of those operas, who you felt his presence always. And uh, then in the final, right, we play Cloud9 which was a very big surprise. They went down 0-2 in the group stage. Boom, you go into E-League major groups, 0-2. You're 0-2, dead team walk-in starts to rise, the zombies start to stand up, there's like resentment building in the team, people aren't very happy. Behind the scenes, there was a lot of rumors going around that Cloud9, the team was finished, like they were done. They didn't want to play with each other. And they flipped a switch, and that switch was, now they're 1-2, now they're 2-2. Two now they're three and two, they're out of groups, and now all of a sudden something's cooking here. Now Cloud9, on the other hand, an unbelievable difficult run that they faced. It was an uphill battle. They had to beat all of the top teams above them to get there. We were kind of happy to play Cloud9 in the final. And we were like, oh, yeah, okay, now we got a very big opportunity, right? And then, yeah, the final, we win the first map, and then we lose the second map, and then we play the third map, Inferno. And uh, yeah, I think every, everybody knows how that went. I, to this day, I still haven't looked at that game. I haven't looked at that VOD. Uh, I can't do it. You've never watched it back? No. I have a very hard time doing so. Uh, I've watched the Mirage game. That's the only one. I watched the one we won. And I, I'm like, I'm not watching more, man. I don't really see the point because I know that I'm just going to get pissed off. I'm just going to get angry. I'm just going to get tilted. All right, let's watch this shit again. You know, um, we're here on NA soil. You got Stu coming on Tarek's shoulders. I think the boys were just, first of all, like the fact that they were there at all after being on two was probably going through their heads. And then I think just in general, they knew they needed to get this crowd going, like any advantage you can get. Yeah, it was a super big moment for Americans. Not only the first time in a major final, I think it is for the Americans, or second time, but also being on, a, on home soil. 
Nobody expected it. Boston makes a noise in this bitch! They start the press and the pistol bullets are all over the place, but it's going to be FaZe who get the defuse. I think the, the whole game was very close. And then on the T side, when we switched over, we played super good in the start. I don't know, I felt super confident during the whole final, during the whole major. I had a feeling that we were going to win. Match point phase, they are on the cusp of winning this major. And after that, I think we all started to believe maybe a little bit that we had already won. And you said Cloud9, if they wanted to do it, they'd have to do it the hard way. But at the same time, this makes me feel a little bit better because I thought it was 59, but 15 11. But we should, yeah, we should still win this. Uh... Tarek is not done with this major yet. Here it is, Tarek! They stay alive for one more round. Tarek gets big op kills, big clutches, big b holds. Like, they definitely needed to show up. It wasn't easy. In the most pivotal moment, it has to be Carrigan. It has to be the leader. But it's rushed all the way. And Talbot again! Again, they stay alive! But then, um, still, we started playing off in pool on banana like every round and uh, we had a very hard time adapting to that being pulled automatic coming off his position the smoke the flashes automatic flights do he need to land some shots and he is two kills for him there was a couple of moments where it looked bleak and then all of a sudden we Boom. Goes down, he must stay alive. Stewie is going absolutely crazy on the B-bomb site. There's no time to fly the bomb. It's too late. The money's not there. One more round. What's about the noise? The horse starts pumping 10 times faster because you just want to end it. The final buy and the final round. And this is a lot of pressure because we felt that we should win this major. And there was a lot of people who really wanted to win a major. Guardian has been in a major final like four times and this was his fourth one and we are 15-14, and it kind of feels like this is the only chance we have. Take a breather here, and recompose for the final round of regulation. Yeah, I think they like fake day, and they were falling back me last second. Base clan trying to force the CTs back on A. It's one minute left, but I think we have a little bit hard time to decide what we want to do. I make a stupid play. One of my slow has been taken out towards the B-bomb site. It's about the pressure it gets to you, man. And I think FaZe like, might have got a kill, but there's like 12 seconds. They are one B. Three on B now. If Stewie just gets run over, they probably get bombed down. Stewie's on his side, but look at the time! And this, this by Stewie, man. Look at the time, there's seven seconds of God above! Boom, time's wearing down. You can hear Barrel's voice right now. They're trying to build pyramids, but there's no more play! Boom, Stewie holds B. Stewie's on the run! We go to overtime! Time's on his side! How have they done that? They came back all the way! He hits every shot. If he misses one of those and they get the refrag, we win the major. So that feels hard to see, yeah. It's hard to watch, man. It is. It's first time seeing this, so... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Secured the overtime, which was still not a done deal, but uh, what an epic feat in that arena. And that's when the crowd started losing their minds, saying, I think, I think we can close this, let's do it here. They give themselves another chance and you have to wonder. These personalities, I feel like both Tyrek and Stu especially, they kind of become better when the crowd is on their side. They can feed of it, you know, right? And they didn't give up and you have to give it to them. NA's wanted this major so bad that I think right when they hit that overtime round, it was like, it was like a release, collective release of the audience, like losing their mind. I mean, for us, it was hard to reset mentally, right? Because you feel like you kind of have already won the major when you're at 15, 11, T side. And then you're on overtime, you're like, shit, we had four tries. Cloud9's defense is looking very strong indeed. Press back at it again from the pit position. And it doesn't seem like there's a way to stop Cloud9 now. But it's hard watching because it's so like small stuff that could have changed a lot of rounds. And that's... Uh, it's Guardian! He's the only man standing between Cloud9 and the Major! It's gonna be a double peak! There's the first one! Oh! We're going to overtime number two! Guardian did clutch a lot in this tournament, so you felt like it was still a possibility. You're hoping, right? Can he do it again? He's been in this position before to win phase around a very important, a very crucial one. Can he deny Cloud9? He's gonna close this 1v2. This is what he does. We saw from this position before. He cannot miss a single shot. You can hear them saying, send them home. Guardian waits. 
patiently. It sucks wanting your teammate to clutch, but this, I don't know. As Kyle Weiss sets the push up. Oh! Oh, this happens! And they peaked him and he missed a shot. I was like, dude, that, that was it right there. Cloud nine are your elite major champions! So I was just like, honestly, watching on my phone when they were in the playoffs, while they're doing this, what's going on? I'm like, dude, I thought that wouldn't major. And then all of a sudden, I'm checking my phone. This map, that map, third map, they, oh, they lost. Oh my gosh, I didn't lose. It's overtime. Oh my, and like watching it, and I was like, dude, they just won the major. You're shocked. You don't know what to say, you don't know what to do, and you don't understand what just happened, because like 10 minutes ago, you were up 15-11. You were gonna win a major, but you end up losing in double overtime. Yeah, that was, uh, it's a tough one, and it's the hardest loss that I ever had in my career. And, one of my hardest days in my entire life. Oh, dude, I can't imagine uh, for all off Nico, all those boys on face. I mean, one, to just feel like you're just such a better team top to bottom, and then two, actually be at match point and let the map slip out of your hands like that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's one that they didn't sleep well for a couple nights at least after that. To this day, I mean, uh, people talk about that upset, and Nico should have won. That could have changed his whole career and, and trajectory. These are the moments that you remember more than the wins. Like the wins, you kind of get over them pretty fast, but the losses, they still haunt you to this day, you know? Cloud9, the E-League major champion! NACS definitely fell back after we won that, yeah, and it, 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 it did. It, for the fans now, we had something to hold on to. And then as players, now you knew that everything was gonna be taken more seriously. Today, you have made history. You are the E-League Major Champion. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, I don't really have much words to say, as you know. <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying, stop. <laughs> uh, it's just so epic to have Skadoodle do that interview because that's not him. Like he was always in the background and to have, I'm not crying, you're crying, you know? Um, but I understand to pass that barrier and to overcome that is kind of what they were all playing for. Finally, with a North American major win, the scene rejoiced. And boy, did we ever have fun in doing so. Where did all the memes come from? You are not my friend, you are brother my friend. You are not my friend, you are my brother, my friend. I definitely think North America had the most, like, content, you know, like, Mo, uh, you know, the chicken coop scene. Please, please, chicken coop. Chicken coop! Chicken fucking coop! <laughs> I could hear his voice from the picture. I don't know how often you could say that. Tarek eating cereal, getting aces. Freakazoid, our whole team, you know, tank top nine. Um. I always the guy, like a memes coming here, uh, to Papito, to me. The school in eSports, they have an application uh, where you can basically catch up on all of the eSports. People are very shy in Poland because they think about me bad, I am stupid, I don't know English, and I don't care. When someone asks me, Pasha, I go to interview, I go for interview. Uh, hello, my friends, here is talking Pasha Biceps from Virtus Pro. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, my friends. People would recognize me in 2009, but not to the same extension we happened in 16 and 17. I think I became the most followed uh, pro player in CS. I was able to be uh, presenting a shampoo, for example, for Kurtz, like Cristiano Ronaldo, you know? <laughs> which, which one you want? People are like in Brazil saying, do you want the Cristiano Ronaldo face or falling face? Of course, I'll take the falling one. G -G! Oh man, I already know you. The flashbang dance this is a simple one. I can only do a little one behind the chair here. But the flashbang dance, it started as the character in CSGO when they got blind, their arm goes in front, you have the gun out. It was kind of goofy. And then like we beat Dignitas on stage, like a cologne, and I just flashbang dance on him like right before the handshake on the stage. And then it just like, it just started rolling where people are like flashbang dance. And like, that was, that was the thing that I created all the way to this point where now we have a song in the game called the flashbang dance, so. We saw that Neymar was playing and then 
he wanted to, to start investing into a team. Like he even thought about buying us for one skate, from what I heard. Quite frankly, he he's he's good. He's smart, like he knows some tricks, he knows how to clutch. <laughs> I see him a lot, and I go to matchmaking. And there was the guy who, you know, act bad. And I say to him, you are not my friend. You are not my friend. And uh, he was, you know, he feel bad. And I say, you are not my friend. You are my brother, my friend. You are my brother, my friend. I went to Russia and boom, the guy had a fallen face with a full bird on his arm. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, you, what, what, do, what do I mean to you for you to put my full face on your bicep? I always say, my friend, my friend, my friend. I like it. I'm proud of this because it's very good, good sentence. It's very good sentence. But amongst all of that fun, Little did the sea know that a new king was emerging from the icy winds of the north. Okay, so Peter, a lot of people say that uh, this is where the action happens. This is not the bedroom. I'm not talking about the bedroom, but uh, <laughs> I know that there should be some trophies in here. There's a little bit of trophies in here. And I'm curious to see which ones you can show me. There's a few. I mean, you mentioned I have this one. It's not, not as pretty, but it's an MVP, at least from Blast. It's like... Uh, Quality yeah. has up and to yes, since then, huh? Yes, it has. But MVP, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got nice. a little bit. This is like one of the oldest tro like trophies that I have, like from the stack. It's called Steel Series, this goal league. It was like a Danish small championship. You, you also know it's small when it says, congratulations for your a nice placement in the Steel Series League. Mm -hmm. Thank you for participating. And keeping the esports <laughs> going. Yeah, that's a keeping it alive. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, we had the Katowice one here. Nice. And there's like uh, ECS season was five. Was this the one in uh, London? Mm, yeah, I think so. And this one as well from. I mean, careful, you might drop on your toes. It might hurt. You can just give me all of them. I'm gonna present for one day that I'm Dupree. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then of oh, course that, this is a insane life you know yeah, I can have the gold bar too damn son I brought you some tea Casper lovely you told me I could give you the best one in the house so I brought you the mango one <laughs> you gave me yours I think I know I did there's a lot of pictures here and I can definitely tell that this is like a really great combination of everything that CSGO has brought to us this is, I think, the first iteration of Astralis. Yeah. And probably the first organization that was owned just by players. Yeah, like the first player-owned organization. We wanted to have, like, we had wanted to have a voice within mm. the team. And I think that was one of the main reasons why we wanted to create it. Um, also because we wanted to create something Danish. I think that was also one of the things that was that, that stood out for us. But that was also like the, maybe the kickstart of the choking thing that we also had in Astralis. I think that yeah. came later in Astralis. Um, we won a couple of tournaments in TSM. But there was without a doubt that we had issues dealing with the pressure and dealing with the expectations that, that came along with the whole yeah. winning process. Um, and I think uh, this is like me, I don't know how many people actually know her, but she was the first one that we picked up in Astralis to help us like, get, like, solve these problems, you know, yes. like, try to make us see ourselves as athletes in a different way. And she was also one of the forces for us winning our first major, I believe. It's Team Astralis, like an organization, I always remember them like a very professional team. Like a players, then staff before the final. When I saw like uh, the psychologue, and we said, what the hell is going on? They got psychologue in the team, the girl. And everyone you know that they are one step ahead of us with psychologue guys. Actually, prior to this this major win, um, I was like given a warning from from Sonic at that time because I had I had my uh, my struggles in my personal life that I that I couldn't figure out and it, it, it yeah it just made me a bad teammate I guess and mm. I couldn't find the focus so he actually told me maybe three months before the, the major that uh, you know you need to like get your shit together otherwise you know we might eventually have to look for someone else and obviously the further we got into the tournaments I feel like we started playing better and 
then all of a sudden we found ourselves in the grand final against Virtus Pro, you know, like the Poles at that time, they were like really experienced. And I remember going up against them in the final was like, okay, this is like a little bit of like the final boss, you know? Yes. We've got an amazing story going into this final. Duncan, just give me some thoughts. For me, Astralis, I mean, we're not losing to the best team in the world. You look at their record, three finals in a row, but they're facing the legends, you know? This is a team where they've had the same lineup since they won that last major, which was in early 2014. So you know this is a legendary team and they kind of play that final boss role in this era. We never found ourselves in a grand final of the of a major before. Yeah, that's what we all want to achieve, but winning one is also what what you're fighting for as a Counter-Strike player. Yes. Maybe you want to talk us through the third map train, because you were behind quite a lot. Yeah, right? yeah, we were. So can you remember anything from this comeback? Like I think I remember everything. Yeah. <laughs> it would require nothing short of a miracle for Astralis to bring this game back. We lead in the last map, like if 13 to 6, I guess. 13 to 6. It's almost three rounds to, to get like a second major. I already think about, you know, like uh, my achievement, about, you know, like a money we can bring to Poland. I can, you know, do something. I can invest something. You're telling me that on the CT side, when you were trailing behind yeah. quite a lot, yeah. there was no point where you were like, this is getting away from us. We're not yeah, winning. Yeah, a little bit. Of course there is. I mean, I think you always have a little bit of doubt, but I think it's about like not let the doubt take over. Like you always need to keep fighting for everything mm -hmm. around. And I think that's what we did. Zepix with Zepix, he's playing this magnificently, and there's the clutch, point blank with the Tech 9. And the further we got into the game, like, the closer we got to the end. One kill after another, Astralis have now found their way to 10 rounds. And then we got the 14, 15 round. Pashu and Taz are left, it's a two on four, Astralis to bring you back. To go for that kind of play, to throw it all on one round, a rush onto A. VP definitely did not expect that. That the last call, the glaive, I think that's like one of the most iconic things in my career is that the glaive was like, guys, we're just gonna rush outside, just do the rush again. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah let's do it. You know, everyone felt that, okay, this is gonna work no matter what. Are they going to win their first major, the first time they're in the finals? And their first title, we'll find out, because the action's on, and Gabby opens it up, takes down Bialy already! The bomb has been picked up by Dupree, they get the spray, Neil takes one, and Taz is there, and Astrona has to win the first major championship, 16-14! Like I said, like, uh... Like Katowice was my favorite tournament. A major Atlanta was the you know, most heartbreaking moment in my career. After the finals, we asked Astralis, guys, what you doing? What are the tactics? How you won, how you won versus us? This is impossible. And you know, you know what they said? They said, guys, on the arena, on the crowd, was so loud, very loud. We don't hear nothing. And we just say, go Russia. And that's it. You can imagine? Nothing special, nothing special. Just rush, just press the W forward and go, in, you know, to the map. This is what you know, I don't know what to say. I ended up getting the last kill as well and all this, you know, the, the feelings of getting a warning and being, oh, there's a chance I might get replaced and everything, you know, I had all that taken away from me. Two days, I don't know how we, how we lost, really. 13-6, three rounds, three rounds, it's so close. When I started playing, I don't think I expected me to win a major. I don't think anyone does that in some sense. Like, you want to achieve and win a major, but actually getting there is kind of crazy. So this is the, the relief photo, right? With the confetti and your tongue is out and... Yeah, yeah. I, like, oh. yeah, I remember when we won that round, everyone just jumped up and threw the headsets off and Danny started crying and I started crying and I was sitting on the floor crying. And probably the, the kicks out of the Stratus era as well. This must be the coolest thing you have here? I uh, think so, yeah. Inside Grand Slam, Peter Dupree Rasmussen, Dreamhack Marseille, Pro League Season 7, IEM Chicago, and then you ended with the ESL Pro League Season 8, Home Turf in Odense. What a run. Hell yeah. What a run. <laughs> That's pretty cool. This is probably the one that I, that I love the most from all the things I have here. Yeah, yeah, the first one. The first one to do it, I think that's cool. Also the Satakis phrase when uh, you won. Oh yeah, yeah. Did I, that's actually pretty yeah. cool, yeah. What is it, the best to best, ever fucking I think do it. The is. best to ever fucking do it. Yeah. I think something like that, yeah. And for the first time in history, the best of all fucking time, it's a grand slam, it's a struggles. This is actually from the winning notes. This is where we won the grand slam, where, my, where I hugged my dad. It was like maybe a half a year, five months before he passed away. So this is like one of the oldest, like the newest pictures I have of him. And then I have one with my son up above, so it's like dad and son, dad and son. Yes.
you know, it's been kind of a thing that has been following my whole career that my, my father was, um, was uh, suffering from cancer. So the whole idea of me, you know, having to go to the major and play there and play, you know, to defend our championship and everything was like, it was, was super tough. Um, but his wish was just that he wanted me to, to do the things that make him proud. I came into this tournament with my father. Uh, yeah, he passed away just before I got here, and his last wish was that I, I went here, and so I really want to dedicate this, this win to my father. When I got there, it, it, it kind of felt like I got to my second family in some sense, you know, yeah. I, and it just felt really nice knowing that all the rivals that I had, you know, all the players in, that I was competing against. I think we know that we can put things aside if things get get serious, and for me, that was a really warm feeling. Um, so that was, that was amazing, at least. With every year that passed, we began to wave goodbye to the legends that have made this game what it is today. Uh, this moment, this moment, uh, I feel it. I feel it, uh, I will a bit cry. This is, this is me, this is all of me here, in, in one moment. I will remember this day for a good day. And with those foundations set, we ushered in a new generation of competitors. Each with their own struggles and journeys. A set of memories waiting to be told. I guess looking back at the early years, it really was all about the memories. If I take a look at all the pictures and all the memories, what would be my takeaway is that what an incredible, incredible journey we have done as a team, as an individual, and also like how big eSport has become for people's lives. It's a big story, and we're all part of that story in Count Strike. Oh, I don't think I would have seen like one sixteenth of the world without Counter Strike. Not only seeing other places has always been such a big honor for me, but just getting to see other cultures and, and see the different sides of humans depending on their backgrounds. It's, it's always been a big, big blessing for me. I think when it comes to greatest memories, being on a team and like really getting to have the bond with your teammates is probably like the thing I celebrate most. Other than that, man, always able to be pretty proud that I left most of it in the server. When I see this um, this picture and all this badge, it kind of felt like, honestly, it was yesterday. I don't feel like it was more than 10 years ago, like there is no way. Yeah, I don't think uh, I still realize like how fast actually uh, the 10 years just uh, went. Looking at all these pictures, it reminds me of when I was at the Antwerp uh, major. I just hear the crowd roar and mm. I just started to cry. Like I oh, couldn't, really? I couldn't handle it. Because I thought back to when we were sitting on like gym hall or yeah, something small. with these chairs yep. and you know sitting and, and now it looks like this you you yeah exactly uh and now it looks like that it's just like half my life you know the journey was beautiful you have an up and downs up and downs you know like a roller coaster in this life esports like a vp show me the world I spend with my team like more time than my family. I sit with them on the team speak, like eight, sometimes ten or twelve hours pay per day. I travel with them, I boot camp with them. I see them, you know, much more than my kids, than my than my than my wife. So we are like a family. In one time I can love them and in one moment I can hate them. But to be honest, I can say after many years, Jesus Pro, you are not my friend, you are my brother, my friend. Counter Strike can teach you a lot of things, yeah. and not just about winning or earning money, but also yeah. like 
it's more like how to work together and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I met my I met my girlfriend. I was just gonna say, uh, it, yeah. it, it literally gave you gave your child. partner, <laughs> your girlfriend, your your child. Yes. You have a son. Yeah. At some point, you're gonna <laughs> teach him to play CS. And, of course, I will. You know, and that's how it goes down through the you know generations. I think. Knowing that the new game has has just launched, and in 10 years, maybe someone else will be sitting like we do and look back at how CS2 changed their life. I am. Um, more thankfully than you can ever become of Cisco because I've uh, not only become a better player in the game and got my work from it, but I've grown as a person and done things that I would never expect to do. I have lost words. It's, it's everything to me. If I look back over the 20 years I have been playing, there are so many friendships and so many moments that I share with others, and that's why we're going to take home. The trophies are nice, but when you look back, I think it's all the moments of people and all the joy you had and all of everything you learned that's gonna stay with you the most. How many more years do you think you have of career? Ten. Damn, bro, if I had ten more years? <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you to all again. 100%, I will do it all again. Will I do it all over again? Bro, please. I mean, I would in a heartbeat. If I would do it one more time, oh yeah. yeah. Can we just rewind 10 years and then start over? <laughs> and I guess with that, it's time to say goodbye. Take it away, Shocks. If you are new to Counter-Strike and if you are coming to CS2, then I would recommend you should actually follow the ride because it's not only a game, it's a passion, it's a group, it's smile, it's happiness, it's emotions, it's tears. You're gonna live it, you're gonna press it, and everything is gonna change. Counter-Strike is not only a game, it's a family. Are red balls only for the commercials, or can you actually drink them? No, you, you can, can actually. <laughs> you, you can drink them. <laughs>